we were supposed to take these guys to South Pole and uh, for weeks on end there the weather was no good. So we cancelled the trip and then we decided we are going to give them a, a little gift of coming to see Holtana, which is a really beautiful site. So we spent the day, uh, they went watching around the rocks, we stayed around the airplane. Uh, nice good snow, everything was beautiful weather. Uh, T-shirts, getting a tan on the wings. And then, uh, then we decided, alright, it's time to go. So we were heading down, downhill, downwind, and, and then the takeoff uh, wasn't working for us, so we got to the bottom of the runway. And then we turned around and decided that we we're going to go into wind, but it was uphill. So as we we're going into wind, everything seemed all right. Life was good. We were getting some airspeed. We we're on our way to getting airborne. And then we hit a, uh, a big old ice drift that was hidden in the deep snow that we didn't see. And then uh, then the front fell off. So uh, in we went. The uh, landing gear ripped off. The uh, both engines came off. Um, from talking to the passengers in the back, it was actually really smooth when we went in there. It didn't hurt all that much. It was about Christmas time last year when Gerald and I got the call that we were going to come down and have a look at Liddy and see how actually bad it was going to be. Yeah, it was a mess. We uh, It was sitting right on its belly. Both wings were exposed. Most noticeable damage had to have been the nose. There was nothing left of the nose. The props were off to the left hand of the wing. The gear was split right in half. The one ski was Teflon holding it together. Um, we had a good look at the wings, noticed that the right hand gear had skipped underneath and ripped the whole left hand wing apart. It was, I know Gerald thought back and forth whether it was going to be a write off, and it was almost a write off. But I know he and I and everybody else in aviation doesn't like to see a nice bird like this go down. I started with coming here to evaluate it, take pictures, and then when I got home, actually sit down and review them and figure out where the damage is and then try to put a dollar to it. I always believe that you can fix it. You can always fix the aircraft. The hardest thing is to get everyone else to believe what you believe. <laughs> Lydia is a DC-3 that rode off the assembly line in 1944 during World War II. During the war, a lot of women worked in the factories and that's where the legend of Rosie the Riveter comes from. We talk about Rosie a lot during this project and it's cool that in the wing structure, you can even see some handwriting from the people that were putting the airplane together. During the war, the C-47 was used for everything from towing gliders to dropping paratroops on D-Day. But even before the war, the DC-3 had already revolutionized air travel. With the ability to fly coast to coast in only 15 hours and three fuel stops. It's what made air travel today. It happens to be the largest aircraft you can operate commercially and make money on skis. Say, it's just a good rugged airplane. We knew in getting back to Canada the key for this project was a cockpit that was going to work for this. It was just a matter of finding one. Rounded up one that uh, actually was an old Israel uh, military cockpit I guess. The planning and logistics, probably the worst was Calgary. Sitting in Calgary trying to find another airframe to take a portion of it and cut it down and make it fit. Gerald was busy planning what work would be required to get Lydia flying again and he contacted Catabatic Consulting to plan the camp and, and provide a staff to run it. But first we have to get there and that's no easy feat. Cape Town to Novo Air Base was on board a Russian-built IL-76 cargo plane operated by ALCI. We had a week of stormy weather at Novo before we were able to use another DC-3, Mia, and a Twin Otter to fly to the Lydia crash site at Holtana Glacier. A few years ago, Lydia was used to rescue Mia when she crashed in Antarctica. It's about a week late, but we're finally here at Holtana with the put-in crew. What an amazing location. 360 degree views. I really think it's the most beautiful place I've seen in Antarctica. Well, we've got a lot of work to do. Literally tons of cargo to unload, and we've got to get camp set up before we can go to bed tonight. It's not going to get dark, but it is going to be a long day. Got here yesterday afternoon. Got the heat going in the main tent, kitchen tent here, about uh, midnight last night. Everybody had a pretty good night's sleep, and uh, we're expecting the rest of the crew later today.
with the entire crew finally at Holtana, it's time to get to work on the aircraft. Lydia's been sitting here for almost a year. That's a lot of drifting snow, so we've got our work cut out for us. We found the best way to move a whole lot of snow is to cut it into blocks, throw it in a sled, and then haul it away. Yeah, when the snow machines break down, we're left to the traditional form of man hauling in Antarctic Special. <laughs> Yesterday you had really good progress on the other side. <clears throat> the chainsaw, we we're just cutting big blocks out. Uh, this morning the chainsaw broke. So here we are, picking away at the ice. It's slow going. Lots of fun. Hank and I are just here cleaning up the cockpit. We're just taking off the first four bolts of this pilot uh, chair and we're gonna pull that out and hopefully get the rest of the snow out of here. Yeah, there's a few things in here that aren't uh, exactly like they should be. They're a little loose, so uh, hopefully after a few weeks we'll have everything tightened up in here. We uh, removed this panel last week. Gerald and I figured it would be one of the things we would do for Alexei, who was the original owner of ALCI. He passed away a couple years ago. And he had two daughters, Mia and Lydia, and those are the handprints of him and his family. We figured we would cut this panel off and give it to him or the ALCI people, and they can do what they want with it. So this was one of the important things that we wanted to do while we were here. The job of the camp staff is to do whatever we can to support the project and make sure these guys can focus on working on the airplane. We melt a lot of snow for water, keep everybody fed, take care of any medical needs, and we move a lot of snow. So I'm building our sun shelter for our food. Just making sure that we had everything we needed, you know, not too much, not too little. The cost to send anything around the world is huge. To get it to this continent and to that location, so much more. Got the uh, left hand engine in here now, torquing uh, the engine mounts. Leave about another day hooking everything up, wiring harnesses, making everything safe, tight. But uh, big, big visual progress, big positivity for the crew here. We're uh, looking good here. Day 13, one engine in. It's all right. It's not bad down here, really. Like, I'm serious. <laughs> Today was a big day for the crew here. We woke up to some one of the worst mornings ever and didn't know how we were going to get through and the snow blowing snow, but we managed to get the lower cockpit on, so everybody's in a pretty good mood. And, Go on from here and see if we can get the, all the stringers tied in. We'll see how it moves. Well, Antarctica kind of kicked our ass a little bit last night. Yeah. Uh, some parts of the airplane, new aluminum for the airplane went blown by. So we rounded that up around midnight. And then around 5, uh, Lou came to the kitchen and found that it had been partially destroyed by the wind. It's not too bad. Uh, we'll be able to rebuild that, but um, made a little bit of a mess, and uh, this morning we're just going to have some coffee and a Snickers bar, and then uh, start cleaning up and rebuilding. We had a pretty good windstorm that blew in, a uh, pretty big drift and buried the, this entire wing, and uh, we had it excavated there before, and now it's buried even more so than the first time. Over the course of this project, the crew will move over 100 tons of snow, 18 dump truck loads, all by hand.
there's such large gaps between flights. If we didn't get out by a certain time, we'd be stuck here at $5,000 a day doing nothing. <laughs> Okay, we're getting real close to our deadline here. If Lydia's not ready to fly in five days, we're gonna miss our flight back to Cape Town. The next flight to Cape Town is three weeks away. We don't wanna miss that flight. Uh, we're here in the left and landing gear well, and uh, we had some pretty extensive damage. The landing gear decided to go out the left side of the airplane. So we're uh, just finishing up replacing some parts, and uh, hopefully in the next day or two we'll have some landing gear back in here. The left wing sustained a lot of damage from the gear coming out underneath it. After 30-some days of working in tunnels underneath and on top of the wing, it's good to know, pretty rewarding to have a serviceable wing ready for flight. Okay, today's a big day. The crew is gonna start airbagging Lydia and lift her out of the hole. To put things in perspective, the nose of a DC-3 is usually about 16 feet off the ground when it's parked. They're gonna put these big bags under the wings, fill them up with air, and start lifting the whole plane up as much as we can. We'll build snow ramps, and then they'll drive the plane the rest of the way out of the hole. Well, it's come out of the whole day. I think it's going to go well. I mean, the guys did a, a really, really good job, and all the uh, all the hard work that went into it there. There's no reason that nothing that it shouldn't work now, right? I'm glad that yeah, I get to be part of it because I put it in the hole. So I figured, you know, like hauling it out of the hole is is kind of cool. No problems. And she's got the power for it. It's got the slope for it. I, I yeah, she's coming out. Where where it's sketchy is the like, am I going to get it straight? And if I don't and she falls off, then now what, right? It's, it's crunch time, right? So it's, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm confident that it's gonna go well, but I'm not, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. All right, so after uh, 40 days here, we uh, got everything tightened up here in this uh, new cockpit we installed. Just doing some final engine rain. As you see the panels in and stuff like that, and looks like we're gonna uh, start some engines and drive her out of the hole today. We get lucky. I always get lucky. But the thing is, is that we came in pretty close to our, our target date. Within a day or two, a couple of little hiccups, but um, storms, everything going. In the end, everyone picked up, pushed, and we did it.
I didn't have to go looking for guys on this one. You, usually you have to look for people to actually go and do it. Um, everyone that came on this one offered to go, volunteered to go, which was good because uh, they were good guys, good at what they did, and it made it easier to do.